Good day to you all and welcome to this 23rd day of September, day 266 in our journey through the Bible. How about that, my friends? 99 days left in this calendar year. And we are at that thing that we do every day. We're about to spend that time in God's Word and we're going to let God's Word spend His time on us. And oh, what a thing that is that God would spend time with us. And it's not just when we're reading the Bible. No, he's with us all the time. And sometimes we give our attention, our affections, well, we direct them towards him. That we might learn from him, that we might walk in his ways. Today, we're going to begin that journey in Ezra chapter 1. Then we go on to Psalm 84 and 85, and we will finish in Luke's Gospel, chapter 7. This is the word of the Lord. Ezra chapter 1. In the first year of King Cyrus of Persia, the Lord fulfilled the prophecy he had given through Jeremiah. He stirred the heart of Cyrus to put this proclamation in writing and to send it throughout his kingdom. This is what King Cyrus of Persia says, The Lord, the God of heaven, has given me all the kingdoms of the earth. He has appointed me to build him a temple at Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Any of you who are his people may go to Jerusalem in Judah to rebuild this temple of the Lord, the God of Israel, who lives in Jerusalem. And may your God be with you. Wherever this Jewish remnant is found, let their neighbors contribute toward their expenses by giving them silver and gold, supplies for the journey, and livestock as well as a voluntary offering for the temple of God in Jerusalem. Then God stirred the hearts of the priests and Levites and the leaders of the tribe of Judah and Benjamin to go to Jerusalem to rebuild the temple of the Lord. And all their neighbors assisted by giving them articles of silver and gold supplies for the journey, and livestock. They gave them many valuable gifts in addition to all the voluntary offerings. King Cyrus himself brought out the articles that King Nebuchadnezzar had taken from the Lord's temple in Jerusalem and had placed in the temple of his own gods. Cyrus directed Mithradath, the treasurer of Persia, to count these items and present them to Shushbazar, the leader of the exiles returning to Judah. This is a list of the items that were returned. Gold basins, 30. Silver basins, 1,000. Silver incense burners, 29. Gold bowls, 30. Silver bowls, 410. Other items, 1,000. In all, there were 5,400 articles of gold and silver. Sheshbazar brought all of these along when the exiles went from Babylon to Jerusalem. Psalm 84. For the choir director a psalm of the descendants of Korah to be accompanied by stringed instruments. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of heaven's armies! I long, yes, I faint with longing to enter the courts of the Lord. With my whole being, body, and soul, I will shout joyfully to the living God. Even the sparrow finds a home, and the swallow builds her nest, and raises her young at a place near your altar. O Lord of heaven's armies, my King and my God, what joy for those who live in your house, always singing your praises. What joy for those whose strength comes from the Lord, who have set their minds on a pilgrimage to Jerusalem. When they walk through the valley of weeping, it will become a place of refreshing springs. The autumn rain will clothe it with blessings. They will continue to grow stronger, and each of them will appear before God in Jerusalem. O Lord of heaven's armies, hear my prayer. Listen, O God of Jacob. O God, look with favor upon the king, our shield. Show favor to the one you have anointed. A single day in your courts is better than a thousand anywhere else. I would rather be a gatekeeper in the house of my God than live the good life in the homes of the wicked. For the Lord God is our sun and our shield. He gives us grace and glory. The Lord will withhold no good thing from those who do what is right. O Lord of heaven's armies, what joy for those who trust in you. Psalm 85 For the choir director, a psalm of the descendants of Korah. 
Lord, you poured out blessings on your land. You restored the fortunes of Israel. You forgave the guilt of your people. Yes, you covered all their sins. You held back your fury. You kept your blazing anger. Now restore us again, O God of our salvation. Put aside your anger against us. Will you be angry with us always? Will you prolong your wrath to all generations? Won't you revive us again so your people can rejoice in you? Show us your unfailing love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. I listened carefully to what God the Lord is saying, for he speaks peace to his faithful people. But let them not return to their foolish ways. Surely his salvation is near to those who fear him, so our land will be filled with his glory. Unfailing love and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed. Truth springs up from the earth, and righteousness smiles down from heaven. Yes, the Lord pours down his blessings. Our land will yield its bountiful harvest. Righteousness goes as a herald before him, preparing the way for his steps. Luke chapter 7 When Jesus had finished saying all this to the people, he returned to Capernaum. At that time, the highly valued slave of a Roman officer was sick and near death. When the officer heard about Jesus, he sent some respected Jewish elders to ask him to come and heal his slave. So they earnestly begged Jesus to help the man. If anyone deserves your help, he does, they said. For he loves the Jewish people and even built a synagogue for us. So Jesus went with them. But just before they arrived at the house, the officer sent some friends to say, Lord, don't trouble yourself by coming to my home, for I'm not worthy of such an honor. I'm not even worthy to come and meet you. Just say the word where you are, and my servant will be healed. I know this, because I am under the authority of my superior officers, and I have authority over my soldiers. I only need say, go, and they go, or come, and they come. And if I say to my slaves, do this, they do it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed. Turning to the crowd that was following him, he said, I tell you, I haven't seen faith like this in all Israel. And when the officer's friends returned to his house, they found the slave completely healed. Soon afterward, Jesus went with his disciples to the village of Nain, and a large crowd followed him. A funeral procession was coming out as he approached the village gate. The young man who had died was a widow's only son, and a large crowd from the village was with her. When the Lord saw her, his heart overflowed with compassion. Don't cry, he said. Then he walked over to the coffin and touched it, and the bear stopped. Young man, he said, I tell you, get up. Then the dead boy sat up and began to talk, and Jesus gave him back to his mother. Great fear swept the crowd, and they praised God, saying, A mighty prophet has risen among us, and God has visited his people today. And the news about Jesus spread throughout Judea and the surrounding countryside. The disciples of John the Baptist told John about everything Jesus was doing. So John called for two of his disciples, and he sent them to the Lord to ask him, are you the Messiah we are expecting, or should we keep looking for someone else? John's two disciples found Jesus and said to him, John the Baptist sent us to ask you, Are you the Messiah we've been expecting, or should we keep looking for someone else? At that time, Jesus cured many people of their diseases, illnesses, and evil spirits, and he restored sight to many people who were blind. Then he told John's disciples, Go back to John and tell him what you have seen and heard. The blind see, the lame walk, those with leprosy are cured, the deaf hear, the dead are raised to life, and the good news is being preached to the poor. And he added, God blesses those who do not fall away because of me. After John's disciples left, Jesus began talking about him to the crowds. What kind of man did you go into the wilderness to see? Was he a weak reed swayed by every breath of wind? Or were you expecting to see a man dressed in expensive clothes? No, people who wear beautiful clothes and live in luxury are found in palaces. 
Were you looking for a prophet? Yes. And he is more than a prophet. John is the man to whom the scriptures refer when they say, Look, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, and he will prepare the way before you. I tell you, of all who have ever lived, none is greater than John. Yet even the least person in the kingdom of God is greater than he is. When they heard this, all the people, even the tax collectors, agreed that God's way was right, for they had been baptized by John. But the Pharisees and experts in religious law rejected God's plan for them, for they had refused John's baptism. To what can I compare the people of this generation? Jesus asked. How can I describe them? They are like children playing a game in the public square. They complain to their friends. We played wedding songs and you didn't dance. So we played funeral songs and you didn't weep. For John the Baptist didn't spend his time eating bread or drinking wine. And you say he's possessed by a demon. The son of man, on the other hand, feasts and drinks. And you say he's a glutton and a drunkard and a friend of tax collectors and other sinners. But wisdom is shown to be right by the lives of those who follow it. One of the Pharisees asked Jesus to have dinner with him. So Jesus went to his home and sat down to eat. When a certain immoral woman from the city heard he was eating there, she brought a beautiful alabaster jar filled with expensive perfume. Then she knelt behind him at his feet, weeping. Her tears fell on his feet, and she wiped them off with her hair. Then she kept kissing his feet and putting perfume on them. When the Pharisees who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would have known what kind of woman is touching him. She's a sinner. Then Jesus answered his thoughts. Simon, he said to the Pharisee, I have something to say to you. Go ahead, teacher, Simon replied. Then Jesus told him this story. A man loaned money to two people, five hundred pieces of silver to one and fifty pieces to the other. But neither of them could repay him, so he kindly forgave them both, cancelling their debts. Who do you suppose loved him more after that? Simon answered. I suppose the one for whom he cancelled the larger debt. That's right, Jesus said. Then he turned to the woman and said to Simon, Look at this woman kneeling here. When I entered your home, you didn't offer me water to wash the dust from my feet. But she has washed them with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You didn't greet me with a kiss, but from the time I first came in, she has not stopped kissing my feet. You neglected the courtesy of olive oil to anoint my head, but she has anointed my feet with rare perfume. I tell you, her sins, and they are many, have been forgiven. So she has shown me much love. But a person who is forgiven little shows only little love. Then Jesus said to the woman, Your sins are forgiven. The men at the table said among themselves, Who is this man that he goes around forgiving sins? And Jesus said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. And now may our Lord, who forgives our sins, may he now give his blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. Whose song will you sing? Whose dance will you join? Jesus quotes a familiar children's folk song. We played a wedding song and you didn't dance. We played funeral songs and you didn't weep. The song and the dance of this world is the song of the self. It's a lie. It's deceitful. So many are joining in on this song. And religion seems to sing it the loudest. Religion demands that you sing its song and dance to its tune. Religion's song will draw you into a trance of self-justification into the lie of separation in the garden a serpent came and sang a tune and offered us a dance it was a song that insisted on a life apart from God and we've been moving to this song ever since the serpent has used the power of religion ever since to play its tune 
we don't have to sing that song. We don't have to join in that dance. All the prophets have been shouting down that music from the beginning of time. They've been crying out to all who would listen that God is our song, not religion, not the self, not the lie that we're separated from God, not the lie that there's life apart from God. No, God in his great love offers us his life, his love, his song. He offers it to all who are willing to trust him, to come to him in faith and see and believe that they are loved by God. Jesus has come to offer all the broken ones, all those that have sinned much, all those that have been ruined by the world and by religion, a new song and a time to dance. And it's a song of life, forgiveness, and hope. The woman in Luke kneeled down and washed Jesus' feet with her tears, her perfume, her kisses, because she had experienced the love of God. And somehow, a new song broke through, through the noisy chaos of this world and all of its religions. God's love created something new in her, and the prophet saw it. And now Jesus is here, offering it not only to her and the prophets, but to you and to me. So let's choose to sing his song today, like the woman at Jesus' feet. Today, let's choose to join in his dance. Let's all sing the song of life and forgiveness and love and hope, joining together with him. Because we have been forgiven much. And we have been loved much. Now, let's join him in his dance of life. That's the prayer that I have for my own soul. That's the prayer that I have for my family, for my wife, and my daughters, and my son. And that's the prayer that I have for you. May it be so. Hello, Hunter. Hey, Hunter. Hello, Brother Hunter. Hello, Hunter. This is Pauline Loney in Sherbrooke, Quebec. Hi, Hunter. It's Robert Benning. I'm just from Edison, New Jersey. I'm just saying hello. Hey, Hunter. This is Aaron Clifford calling. I'm calling from Beijing, China. Hi, this is Marie from New Zealand. Hi, Hunter. This is Francis Bala from Sharon, Massachusetts. Hello, Hunter. This is Melody from Switzerland. Hello, Hunter and Heather. This is Mallory from Warren, Michigan. Hey, Hunter and Heather. It is David Nevue. How are you doing? Well, we are doing all right, David and all the DRB family. So good to hear your voices. And you, if you're listening today, you can leave us a voicemail as well just by going over to the webpage, dailyradiobible.com, and clicking on that voicemail link. It's free. And no matter where in the world you are, we can connect. So check it out. DailyRadioBible.com is the webpage. While you're there, how about sharing this podcast? There are some easy ways to do that from the webpage. You can also sign up for our newsletter, leave us a review, and just check things out. Well, I'm going to go ahead and check out now, but let me wish you all a very good weekend. I hope you are able to get outside, move your legs a little bit, breathe deep, look up in the sky, and say thank you to the one in whom you live and move and have your very being. May God give you grace and peace this weekend. May you enjoy him, and may you sense his delight in you. And what do you say we show up again here tomorrow, and we'll do it again? Lord willing, in the creek don't rise. Your brother Hunter plans on being here. Here in this cool little studio next to my garage in the beautiful state of Oregon. Until that time, let's go forward in God's joy. Let's let his joy be our strength. And let us always remember this. That you, yes you, are loved. No doubt about it. Alrighty, I'll talk to you again tomorrow. You guys take care. Bye-bye.